Wow. Awesome. Phil just told the team kind of I'm in awe of them. You know, I thought last week we set a standard for how we can play. And, you know, we have to try to play to that standard. And I thought maybe they exceeded that tonight. I just it was a really good team win against uh, the defending champs who have a lot of really good players and are really well coached. And, you know, whether it's the offense being balanced, running for over 200 yards and throwing for over 250 and not turning the ball over in the defense. I don't know what to say about our defense. You know, they keep not only forcing I – mean, Kobe Wilson's touchdown run may be the best defensive play I've ever seen, like the whole play. Like he was supposed to be tackled or even fumbled from behind like four different times and somehow scored. It was incredible. And um, Guys just keep responding. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to play physical again, and we wanted to just keep responding, and they did that. And so, um, you know, it only counts as one, but we're real fortunate and thankful to uh, – to be 1-0 and uh, in our first ACC game, and um, we got seven more to go. You mentioned the offense being more balanced. What, what did Kevin just do tonight that we maybe haven't seen from him in the past, and what was it that led to more of an emphasis in the past game tonight? I mean, last week, it wasn't that we didn't want to throw the ball. It's just the way the game went, right? It was, it was weird. I mean, we still only threw it, uh, what did we throw it, 23 times this week, you know? Um, we're going to have to throw the ball, and we love to throw the ball. But uh, I thought I thought Kevin showed who Kevin is. I mean, he played really well. He made a lot of big throws. I think the, the first one he made on um, third down early in the game where he scrambled to his right and hit Jake Bailey that ended up, I think, helping to score our first touchdown. I thought that was a big play, you know, because we don't punt the ball to them. We were able to score on our opening drive. First time we've been able to do that this year. It was big, and we wanted to get to a fast start. But, you know, later he hits Jake Bailey on a big third and long. Um, the touchdown throws to RJ were incredible. Like he, some of the throws he made, what he did, he did a really nice job down the field of giving guys chances to make plays for him. And then obviously he he could run the football. I mean, he just he played like we think he should play, and he valued the football. And so when he continues to grow, and you could tell he felt like the game was slowing down to him tonight. I mean, that's a fast defense, and he looked fast, um, but he looked under control. And so um, hopefully this gives him a boost and. Um, you know, I think he'll just get better and better from here, hopefully. It comes forth on that first drive for the offense, getting Kevin comfortable getting yeah. the offense. You know, I mean, first drives, <clears throat> obviously you want to score, but I think starting fast is important. Even if you don't score, you want to move the ball and, and have some rhythm. Um, so it's important in general. It was really important tonight. You know, we wanted to start fast against them uh, just because we had been playing well. They had been struggling. You know, you don't want to give them a lot of momentum early. Um, and so I think it was pretty important, really. I think it, I think it always helps settle down everybody's nerves. And, and if you have any of that just human element of doubt in the back of your mind, it kind of helps subside that. So. It's tough. Credit to them. Credit to our coaches. You know, I mean, you can have an idea or a plan, but someone's got to go execute it. And um, our coaches do an awesome job in each one of their individual rooms um, and on each side of the ball of just coaching our guys. And, you know, we, we talked about this week, it wasn't that we knew who we were playing. We just talked about let's play our, to our standard to where we can look in the mirror and feel like, okay, we, we did our best. We did what we're capable of. And if that's not good enough, then fine. We think it will be. Um, and to your point, like, they, they don't play emotion. They play with a lot of passion. I mean, they play with a lot of joy and love. I mean, I looked at our D-line when they had third and goal to three and then fourth and goal to two, and they're just out there just getting the crowd up, goofing around, whatever. I'm like, I'm a little more serious right now than you guys are. But they do. They have fun playing together. And, um, you know, that's a, it's a great quality that I'm hoping is becoming a fabric of this team because we're going to need it. I mean, we're about to go on the road. And, and going on the road in a conference like this is totally different. And uh, it's just a new set of challenges. The, the pressure? I, I don't know. I didn't think about it. You know, I mean, um, I wanted to win. You know, it's an opportunity. I mean, this is a big moment for SMU. Uh, and people have talked about it a lot. We've been talking for 10 or 11 months. So I'm glad we can maybe move on from some of that. But it's, but it's all been good. It, it, it's, uh, you know, Eric Dickerson was in the locker room after the game and talked to the team. And he talked about, man, we've been waiting for this for 30 years. He's like, this is how we used to play. And you made us proud, those kind of things. But 
you know, it, it's hard to put into words in a short answer of, of all the things that this means to just the SMU family and anyone who's connected to the university, past, present, uh, or will be. Uh, but it was a big moment. We're back on the stage. We're playing an ACC game against a national brand, the defending champs. And um, it's just really humbling to be able to validate that we belong and, and to come through when we needed to tonight. Again, it only counts as one, but we're going to enjoy it till tomorrow. Yeah, you don't get to enjoy it in the moment as much. Um, I did get to see President Bush out there, which is always cool, and uh, have so much respect for him. But no, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't get all caught up in all that or get to enjoy it either. But it's worth it to get to enjoy that locker room. I just got to enjoy so. You talked about at the end um, the difference from two years ago when you came in the environment at the stadium. You talked about the fans. Guys, they can feel it. And our fans have answered the call this year, our student section. Like when they were trying to score before half, it was 14 to 7 inside the five yard line. It was loud. You know, it was loud, like, like a big time college football stadium is supposed to be loud when you're at home and make it tough on the opponent. Our guys feel that, they love that. Um, we love that they're there when the game starts, like from the students to the fans to the people in the boxes we can't see. Um, it, it makes a difference. Now, what we have to learn, and we'll be honest to grow to, is we have to stay till the end of the game. And we, we beat the dog out of TCU last week, and we just beat Florida State. It should be packed at the end of the game, celebrating, going crazy. So that's the next step, I think, for for us as a as a as a family, a fan base, a team. Um, but they make a big difference, and I we our players feel that, and we can't thank them enough. I know you had one back there. Can you? I'm just I don't hear well. Yeah, um, we snapped it over his head by look like four or five yards, um, you know, and. I was mad at first because they told me they hit our deep snapper, which you're not allowed to do, but but they didn't. Um, so, you know, I mean, look, Will's been awesome. That's what we told him at halftime. You know, we got beat on the left side on the field goal um, between our left wing and our left tight end. That can't happen. And then we had the bad snap, and then we had the fumble snap. So, you know, we had some critical errors in our teams. Um, I thought we covered kicks well. Their kicker's so good, we knew we weren't going to get to return any. Um, Roderick's usually really reliable. You could tell he was struggling a little bit tonight. But we told him at halftime, man, you guys have snapped a ton of punts. We've kicked extra points and field goals forever. Just go out and do what you know what to do. Don't forget that. It happened. Uh, but it wasn't good when it happened, you know. And I was probably a little conservative backed up. I was trying to get to the half. Um, we weren't able to run it at the level we wanted to. They did have two timeouts. And shoot, we may have saved a point because their kicker could have made it from anything inside the 50. So. You mentioned going on the road. How are you guys feeling? It's a great question. I have no idea yet. I'll be honest with you. Um, I'll I'll let you know tomorrow after I wake up. I mean, I've been to Louisville. Uh, it's a great great setting. It's a great crowd. They are incredibly well coached. They're as well coached as anybody in our league. Have a ton of respect for how they do things. Um, and tomorrow I'll go to church and eat lunch, and then I'll start to worry about that. It's a fair question. Last week you talked about Rashad last week. It's just knowing that you have a any point in time. Oh, it's huge. And you see the versatility he has. I mean, he can run in between the tackles. He can run outside. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. You, you know, we flexed him out thinking we'd get the matchup on the linebacker. But because we had already, you know, we scored a touchdown on RJ, got him matched up on a the linebacker, they, and, and did a few other things throughout the game, they, they said no more of that. So the safety went out and covered him. He's like 10 yards off. We ran a double move thinking we were going to match him up on a backer. It was a safety, and it didn't matter. Now, Kevin made a great throw, and he made a great catch. I mean, but that's a big-time catch, and that's a running back. You know, you see some of the catches he makes that are high. Um, it's a weapon for us. It's a weapon for our run game because our O-line's blocking really well. But to be a good running team, your running backs have to get one. They have to make somebody miss. You can only block it so well. And if, if you only get what it's blocked for, you're always just going to be okay no matter how good your line is. And so he's allowed us to be explosive in the run game, which is going to continue to allow our offense to be explosive. Um, so he's definitely a weapon. And I, and I can't say enough about Roderick Daniels. Guys, he's a receiver that went and played running back, carried it 15 times against Florida State tonight. I mean, he's just a winner. Rashard, he's making an impact from the job. But have, have you seen him grow? I mean, obviously, some of them stopped him playing running. Yeah. Have you seen him grow from these? 
I, I have seen him grow. He's grown in pass protection. He's grown in the overall grasping of it. Um, some guys, God gave the ability to, when you hand them a football, they know how to run with it. That guy knows how to run with it. So, <laughs> hand it to him. Your defense got you three interceptions, held them to less than three yards of carry. Florida State completed barely a third of its passes. What did you like best about your defense? Everything. It was dominant. That was a dominant defensive performance. To your point, they ran 60 plays under 300 yards. They were 12 of 34. So they threw us one-fourth as many as they completed to themselves. And, you know, 75 yards, that's two weeks in a row. Like, it just shows if – and that's what we've been preaching. Like, we have to run the ball and stop the run to be able to compete at this level. And I think our defensive staff, I mean, Scott Simons and that staff deserve so much credit for the consistency and the confidence our guys are playing with. And, and they're not just stopping the run and getting off. They're, they're, they're scoring points, you know, and they're setting up the offense. And so, um, you know, this is what we had hoped for and envisioned at SMU to win a championship or to get to this. We have to be able to play offense and defense. And so they're playing with a lot of confidence right now, and I'm not going to tell them they shouldn't be. What big game characteristics does Kevin have? What do you see out of this? I think one of his biggest big game characteristics is I don't think he knows it's a big game. You know, I don't know. You'd have to ask Coach Todd at Sock about the state title game, but like, you know, Tulane and even the bowl game and a rain and then um, these last two games. I mean, he just goes out and plays. And I don't, I don't, I think he has a great quality that a lot of great players, he doesn't take himself too seriously. You know, a lot of times people do, and I don't, I don't know how you teach that, but he just doesn't. You know, he's in the moment. He trusts his teammates. He loves the game. He has fun. He has a short memory, so he's able to go on to the next play. And um, so hopefully it will help him continue to grow. The program is in the holes. How high does this win the I don't know if I can speak for the whole program because I'm only on year three. But, like, this has to be a, one of the bigger moments for our program, right? I mean, look, last week was great. as a rivalry game. This is different. We – we beat a national brand, um, the defending champs in our first ever ACC game to, to just at least validate we belong. Now, again, it's not going to score us one point or gain us one yard next week or the ne next week or the next week, and there's a lot of good teams in this league. So um, we've got our work cut out for us. But I do think it validates that we feel like we can add value to this league. And But just for so many people from that have been SMU fans from all the way for 40, 50 years and gone through the last 40 year journey, I think just it's probably a lot of validation for them. And uh, that, you know, like Eric said in the locker room, we're proud of you guys. We want to have a program that the SMU family is proud of. And we're not going to win every game, but, but we sure want to make our fan base and our alumni proud by how we play and what we do. And so I think for those reasons, this is a big game. It's a big moment. And we'll look back at the end of the year or whenever and, and probably realize it right now. We don't have a lot of time to reflect, but but I do think it's a big deal, yeah. Coach, on that ball that dropped from the field for your second game with Parents, Florida State took it back because it's their ball. Are y'all going to get the Gills another ball? So what happened? The Florida State took it back because it was the Florida State ball that he gave to his parents. Yeah, I didn't know he gave it to his parents, so that's awesome. Cool. <laughs> I guess he's trying to do what Isaiah Wachobia did last year. Um, it's probably good we get that they, that, uh, they gave it back. I guess that technically would be stealing. So it's called a turnover within the confines of football. It's stealing outside of it. So, uh, yeah, if the McGills need a football, we'll figure that out. Coach, you touched on it. Just um, not, not that often our program is typically, if they're going to have like a month stretch, it would be at home, you know, for four games. Uh, you're going on the road for a month. Six weeks before we get to be here again. Yeah. I mean, only three games sounds a little more dramatic. But, yeah, no, I mean, it's. We want to be in this kind of conference and, and compete. We're about to find out, you know, because we're about to go to one of the best venues in our league to play, and then we're going to go as far west as you can go and as far as east as you can go back to back and uh, against three outstanding coaches. And you know, I know two of them very well and, and have a lot of respect for the other. And so, um, but we're going to enjoy this. I mean, uh, they had not given up over 29 points as a defense in 17 straight games dating back to the beginning of last season, if you don't count the Georgia game. That's a caveat. But their whole team opted out. So all 12 regular season games in Louisville last year and four this year, they've not given up over 30 points. They've been playing really good defense. And, um, you know, and then 
the stat I was told this week, all the way back to when Utah and TCU went to the Pac-12 and the Big 12 and then the four schools last year, those six teams were only one in five in their uh, first ever game in a conference, and none of them have ever had a winning record in the first year in a conference, a winning conference record. So uh, we don't have one yet either, but um, we've got one win, and we're a step in the right direction. So we know the, the uphill battle we have ahead, and it starts with going on the road to Louisville. And um, fortunately, you know, we did go to OU last year. Um, so hopefully those kind of moments, went to Maryland the year before, hopefully those kind of venues will help us for that setting. Coach, any update you can give on Tank Booker and Zoe Mother-Princeton? Can I give you an update on Tank? Because uh, I, I haven't gotten one. But he was smiling big when we were breaking that rock in the locker room and dancing around. So whatever's hurt, it's not hurting too bad right now. So I don't know the extent of that. Uh, Romello, uh, we knew by about Thursday or Friday we were probably going to have to hold him. He has some bursitis and stuff in his knee um, that kind of tweaked in the Nevada game. It's been lingering re-aggravated it on Wednesday's practice. So what we're going to do is probably look at it on Monday. So I don't. He's probably still week to week at this point. We don't think it's anything serious, but, you know, it was just kind of bothering him. So I thought, you know, Keyshawn and Mucci and uh, Jay hud did a really good job in a three-man rotation out there on the outside. Um, was there anybody else you asked about? No. What's recruiting looking like for you guys? I mean, with these two big games, I mean, you want to strike them here on top but also hit them here. Yeah, it's no, it's it's good. I mean, we sold out our ticket allotment for recruits for the first time ever tonight. We had to like tell people, sorry, if you walk up, we don't have a ticket for you. That's never happened. Um, there's a lot of really good players here. So, um, look, I said I think last week, winning's the best thing you can do for recruiting. We got a lot of momentum behind the program, the conference piece. You know, I think for recruits to be able to come to Ford Stadium, see the Weber End Zone Complex. It's, it's impressive, guys, for no matter where you are. And then see the atmosphere in our stadium now and how it changes things and to see a brand like Florida State across from us and um, for how that, that turned out. I think, I think it's all very, very helpful. But, again, you're only as good as your last game, so we got to play well, keep the momentum going. Um, I think I learned that, that they've got a lot of confidence and belief in themselves, you know. And so sometimes there's a lot of things we got to do as coaches to lead them and guide them. And, and, you know, last week we asked them to be physical. They were physical. This week we asked them to still be physical but respond every play, and they responded. And so, like, you know, it's, as a coach, it's like how do you just put them in position and get out of the way? You know, not mess it up. They've got good culture, good continuity, offense, defense, teams together. Winning helps. You know, if you're four and one, it's a lot easier than if you're one and four. You know what I mean? So, but that's how you build confidence. You got to accomplish confidence. We've accomplished confidence the last few weeks, and together as a group, they're playing that way with confidence and belief. And uh, so, we definitely don't want to throw cold water on that. You know, we want to we want to build on that and help help that continue to grow. It was really important. You know, we had a bunch of options for him that some they took away. Uh, we felt like their length at corner was we didn't we weren't scared of him. We had guys make plays, and and after being on the field with them, I feel like our guys belong. But we felt like they had length and speed at corner. But between R.J. and Jake Bailey and the running backs, we could match up on safeties and linebackers. And, and have some success. We had some other opportunities that didn't come to fruition the way we wanted, some we didn't call. But, like, you know, I think a great example is the first touchdown to RJ, we went in a three tight end, one receiver package, which we hardly ever do. Well, they match personnel. There was one corner on the field covering Jordan Hudson. They put a linebacker on RJ Maryland. It's really good for us. So, um, you know, those kind of things. But, yeah, to get him going, I think he, he broke the record tonight, I'm assuming, because yep. he was one away and he caught two. So that's pretty cool, halfway, not even halfway into your third year. Um, but, no, he's a player. He's a playmaker for us, and, and you know, getting him involved has got to be a big part of what we do. And I think he deserves a lot of credit because, you know, even after the first game, he hadn't caught as many maybe balls as he and we would have wanted, and he's practiced just as harder, harder every week. He's been physical in the run game when we asked him to be. Like, he's been the ultimate team guy, and I think you saw what he can do tonight, and Kevin gave him opportunities. Who broke the rock and with as many people who contributed? A lot of people could. Who do you think broke the rock? Well, I just got told, but. <laughs> 
Kobe Wilson broke the rock. Um, a lot of guys deserve to break the rock. And as I walk in, Grizz always kind of talks to me, and he's like, I don't – after I saw that run, guys, that was, that was all I needed to see. But uh, I'll say this, you know, um, thoughts and prayers are going to stay with the Florida State team. You know, they had to leave a day early, and I know a lot of their families. Fortunately, their, the university was, I think, pretty safe. And a lot of – Mike was telling me before the game, I think a lot of their families are in good shape. But not just them, everyone in the southeast. I know it's been pretty devastating. So – um, I want to continue to think about those people and lift them up in our prayers because it's a lot of more important things than football going on right now, and you know they're having to deal with a lot of that. And uh, so, thinking about those guys, appreciate you. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Thanks.